Dr. Jay Adams passed away a couple of weeks ago and Daniel and I were doing these videos and thought let's just let's just talk about let's talk about the boss. Let's talk about the the father of the biblical counseling movement. And so we're going to talk about Dr. Jay Adams in this video. Hello everyone, Rick Thomas here with Daniel Berger. We're doing Life Over Coffee. As many of you know, Dr. Jay Adams passed away a couple of weeks ago. He has affected all of us. We all know who he is and we have different experiences with him. Daniel and I were talking, it's like, hey, let's just put something together because we have our own interactions with him and our thoughts about his life and we do want to honor him and, and just pay tribute to this unique individual that God raised up to do something quite remarkable. I mean, it's why we're doing these videos today, Life Over Coffee with Daniel Berger and Rick Thomas. You can find the roots in the work of Dr. Jay Adams when he gave us Competent to Counsel in 1970. So Daniel, uh, three words, what comes to mind? Dr. Jay Adams. Uh, wisdom. You can do the second one. <laughs> uh, well, I would say courage. Uh, he, he, he brought, uh, he looked at psychology. He interacted with it uh, for years and years and years. Didn't like what he saw. He took the Bible. That's more than a word. <laughs> I, I'm using courage here. <laughs> and so he took psychology and he, he ran it through the Bible and, and came with what we call biblical counseling. And it's like, this is the way that we think about soul care. Now, basically what he did is just brought more refinement, a new way to think about disciples or sanctification, progressive sanctification. But he, he ran it through the Bible and gave us a, a, a new way. And really it, it just, just did a huge transformation over the past 50 years. This past summer they had their, uh, or fall rather, they had their competent to counsel 50 year get together. Now Jade lived just a few miles from here, right here. I mean, like 15 miles from here. And so some folks came down and, and they had that 50 year anniversary. But but 50 years ago, he, he did something that was quite remarkable. And so courage is what comes to mind because, and you face this yourself when you, you, you go to these conferences. We did a video on this uh, a while back that you're talking to secular counselors, you're talking to psychiatrists, they have a worldview that's been shaped and they believe and they come in here with you and I ask you, you know, in that video about your own fear of man, uh, do you struggle? And, and you say, well, yeah, of course you, you do. But when I think about Jay, um, he, he really was opposing something and this is a faith issue for the culture. They believe what they believe and I don't fault them for that necessarily. We all have to believe something. But when you go against that belief system, which is what he did, it takes a lot, a lot of courage. He took a lot of hits uh, for a long yeah. time and did a remarkable thing. So my word <laughs> is courage. Yeah, and, and, and I'll add to, to that, I think he took hits from the Christian community even more so than, than the secular, which is sad. Um, and, and even people I know within biblical counseling uh, have, have borne witness to the fact that they were opposed to him right. initially. And then the more they got into God's word, they realized how, how truly biblical this was. Um, so the third word I would say is, is pioneer that goes along with right. that. Um, you know, I, I kind of look at where we're at in our ministry. Th this whole field was cleared by Jay Adams. So right. I don't need to go plow that over. I can keep advancing and go go beyond what, what he cleared for us. And so, um, you know, to me, that's I, I go to a, a church to speak or to a, a community or to a biblical counseling conference. I don't need to go, you know, elementary principles of, of biblical counseling. That has been you know, widely uh, uh, cleared out, if you would. And so now we get to go more in depth and looking at biblical phenomenologies of secular constructs of, of mental disorders, et cetera. And, and so uh, I'm incredibly thankful for that. Um, you know, another thing I just recently found out, I, I'm obviously shaven today, but when I get uh, writing in a book, uh, sometimes, you know, certain days I'll block off in you know 16 hours 18 hours sometimes i'll just write 
and uh, I get hyper focused and and so what happens over a period of time I get so busy that I'll actually not shave well I found out uh, Adams does did the same thing and uh, just kind of found it to be a waste of time to shave and and I I find that sometimes true well, I, I well. totally concur <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, what a what a pioneer! Um, the first time I, uh, I I come from a a, a fund, fundamental Baptist background, and so counseling is not something that that we did. In fact, counseling was not even a word that we used. We had a counseling class in my undergrad for my theology, but it was Cl uh, Clyde Naramore, I believe, Clyde or Bruce Naramore, who was a, a secularist. Uh, and, and we had some other odd stuff too, but we didn't do counseling, and it, we, we just preached the word, just preached the word. And so I was in an apartment in Queens, New York, in 1990 or 1989, and a friend of mine, his name is Kevin Ryan, uh, he lives in Queens, and he said, "Have you ever heard the book Competent to Counsel?" Or Jay Adams? I said, "No, never have." I mean, Jay's a Presbyterian, so we know that Presbyterians are are wrong and Baptists are right, and so there's no way that I would know about Jay. And so he told me about it, and so and I don't know how I found out because we didn't have Google back then, uh, but somehow I found out that Jay Adams actually at that time pastored Harrison Bridge Church in a neighboring town here, and so I went down there to hear him preach, and. He just talked, you know, and so it's not good Baptist preaching, and so that was wrong. <laughs> and then, the only thing I really remember was uh, he, uh, during the sermon, he, uh, he said, you know, some people talk about being felt led, and he said, felt led, what is that? Is that a, a special kind of pen that people use? And so he was kind of taking a shot at the continuationist and so forth, and so I thought he was humorous, and of course, as I've met him years later on several occasions, uh, he had a great sense of humor. And that's one of the things that I appreciate about him because a person with courage and you're in conflict like all the time, whether it's from within or without, there's a cancel culture in the secular world, but there's a cancel culture within the Christian world too. And so many of us cancel, I canceled him out. Uh, in the early years because he was Presbyterian, because he counseled, because he was outside of my understand, my framework. But then as I got to know him, one of the things I appreciate about him is that he had a sense of humor and it's something that I would always, I always want to retain because we're doing serious work. We're, we are, the way I describe it, we're on the underbelly of Christianity. We're on the dark side of Christianity where most Christians don't go to. And so all of our, we're dealing with all these problems and it, it, it's weighty, it's heavy, uh, it's very difficult. And somehow he was able to do this mighty work, but yet have a, a, a crazy sense of humor. And so that's one of the things I appreciate about Jay, but I'll never forget, felt lead. Uh, that's an interesting, that's, that's a unique writing instrument. I'll, I'll tell you a funny story as well. First time I went to lunch with Jay, uh, he he was talking about, and, and I too was in, in uh, fundamentalism at that time. And uh, he he said, you know, I would I would be a fundamentalist, but I'd have to wear a tie. And, uh, he hated ties. By oh the way. yeah, yeah. He despised them. And, yeah. Uh, so that that's which is humor. odd in itself for a Presbyterian because don't I thought all Presbyterians <laughs> wore neckties, but right? Not, not right. Jay. But yeah, the the sense of humor is uh, uh, just shows you his wit, and um, and he related well to people. Which uh, you know, you read a lot of criticisms of people who didn't really know him. Right. Um, would would pick and choose different things and overlook you know, his entire body of work and things he said. And, uh, you know, he was painted in a poor light uh, many times. And uh, it's it's sad to me, uh, and, and to be quite honest with you, the, the criticisms of him have really provoked me. That's one of the things God has used to say, I don't need to go write critiques of other people. You know, that's not what God has called me to do. Um, I, I'm called to minister. And, you know, that that's uh, I think a positive way to to minister, and Jay did that. He he was, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna. This is where we're going, and if you don't like it, then I'm sorry. You know. Uh, yeah, he had a split personality. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's another video we can talk about. But if you don't understand Jay's 
uh, split personality, which I didn't for a long time. And what I mean by that is he had a, a pulpit demeanor and then he had a counseling demeanor. And, and that's two different personalities. And if you don't understand, like he had a, a critical role in the body of Christ. And so when he was in the pulpit, he was thunder and he was authoritative and he was very hard and very opinionated and very directive in what he was saying. But, but he was Luther. I mean, he, he was Luther in the pulpit, and so he was, as you said, a pioneer. He was blazing a trail. If you only knew him in the pulpit and you, you brought that into the counseling office and communicated that way, it would be a disaster. And so when I met him for lunch one time, it's like, you have a split, I didn't say that to him. <laughs> you have a split personality. So you diagnosed Jay Adams. I diagnosed so. Jay Adams. and. And it, it made it made sense to me. And so when, when you are in the pulpit and you're you're monolo- basically it's the difference between monologuing and dialoguing. And so he didn't dialogue the way he monologued, and he didn't monologue the way he dialogued. Those were two different. And we have to have those personalities as well. Maybe I should get off split personalities here, so you don't get too frustrated with me. <laughs> but I mean, it'd be it'd be similar to other contexts. There's, there's a way to talk to different people in different contexts. But if you only know someone as a powerful, strong, authoritative leader, and then if you imitate that in the wrong context, well, then it can be disruptive and it doesn't do the person good that you're talking to right. and it doesn't help the cause of what we're trying to do, which is do soul care. Yeah, and, and I guess the last thing I'd, I'd like to say too is that his, his work is timeless. Right. Um, you know, because it was biblically based, the Bible doesn't go out of fashion. So Adam's books are just as relative today as they were when he first wrote them. Um, I think that is is, uh, 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 true of anyone who writes biblically. Uh, It doesn't matter what fads, what what new science comes along. The science is always going to point back to the truth of God's Word, genuine empirical science. So Adams was was, uh, not just ahead of his time, if we can say it that way, but He's relevant to to all of us. Still Did today. you have a favorite book? Well, I, I competent to counsel, you know, was was uh, a game changer for me because I wasn't looking at other people needing to counsel. I was real, realizing that I was called to make disciples. I mean, that's essentially what the book says, right? That we're all called, um, we're all uh, e- equipped if we're in the Word of God to do that, and it looks differently because of our different personalities, but. Uh, that book was was significant um, uh, for me. Yeah, I, I read quite a few of them. Uh, asked for my favorite. I mean, we would all say Competent Counsel, uh, Christian Counselor's Handbook, Theology of Christian Counseling. Those those are the standard ones that I think you know we all would say uh, off the beaten path. I mean, he had like 80, 80 or ninety. I, I actually don't know, but he had. He had as many books as Louis L'Amour. I right. mean, he was a machine. And and when you talk about him, uh, his his beard, well, he, he didn't shave while he wrote, but he had a beard his entire life, which means he wrote his entire life. Right. <laughs> he right. never stopped writing. Right. So I'm, I'm writing now, but... <laughs> but the one that I, uh, off the beaten path, the, the book, there were several that kind of struck, but one is co- uh, titled uh, Insight and Creativity. I won't get into that, but... Uh, it is, as Daniel was saying, it's evergreen content, and so it, it it transcends time. And so, if you want to read a very insightful book, uh, Insight and Creativity is a good book. But I would encourage you uh, to go on the, the Institute of Nuthetic Studies. Uh, Don Arms, a friend of mine, ours, you you know Don, yep. uh, that he's heading up Jay's legacy. You can go on their website and you get some of those books. And I would encourage you to just read them, especially if you're getting into biblical counseling, because as Daniel was saying, that that's foundational, and, and Jay was foundational, and then there's a second generation, David Pallison would be one of those, Wayne Mack would be one of those, or several others, and then Daniel and I, we're here, uh, this third generation, and so if you don't have this foundational knowledge and what some like David Pallison would also be a, yep. a person that's essential reading, uh, and then you continue to build, and then you stand on that, and then go out and do the work of soul care. Jay Adams, thank you so much for your contribution. Looking forward to seeing you in heaven, and um, thank you for giving us giving us a life, giving us a career, giving us uh, giving us a point of focus uh, that is very rewarding. Amen. Thank you for watching the video.